Good afternoon everyone. I'm sorry I can't be with you in person, but I'm um, very grateful to the organisers for inviting me uh, to uh, give this paper this afternoon. So what I will be speaking about today is the uh, first two years of the Finmon Castle Landscape Archaeology um, project. I'll run through the aims and objectives of uh, the project, uh, what we've done so far in terms of survey and excavation, um, give an overview of some of the initial results and interpretations, and then sketch out um, what we will be doing over the next five years. So for those of you who don't know, uh, this is where we are. This is Fernmon in the eastern Vale of Glamorgan. Um, uh, basically uh, close to the confluence of the River Kenson and um, Four, just a little inland from, from Aberfour um, Power Station. Now, in broad terms, the aims of the project are to enhance our understanding of the environs and long-term historical context of Funmon Castle um, and the castle's estates by identifying and characterising evidence for multi-period activity, settlement and land use. Um, but within that, a specific aim um, is to focus on the early medieval period, which is uh, my area of interest um, and is an area which is, um, as you will know, is very um, uh, uh, poorly understood uh, in Wales. But we're also aiming to undertake a programme of outreach and engagement alongside um, the archaeology. And in order to achieve these aims, we've undertaken a desktop assessment, um, we've done some survey, and we've also done some excavation, and we will be continuing to do this um, over the next five years. So this is uh, the main study area. Uh, we're focusing on a around 35 hectare area immediately to the um, uh, west of Funmon Castle, an area which is about a kilometre long by about, well, a kilometre wide by about 400 metres um, uh, long. And this area was the, formerly was the demean of the medieval castle. Um, and I was drawn to focusing on this particular area because it, it could be a useful window into exploring the pre-Norman period. Um, if we go by the assumption that the medieval castle was positioned where it is because of some potential pre-existing focus, um, then focusing on the demean land of the castle may be a, a good way of getting at that. And there's certainly hints that this is a rich area um, for archaeological evidence. So here we've got a figure from Oliver Davis's article on uh, prehistoric enclosures or prehistoric earthworks within the Vale of Glamorgan. And this area around the confluence of the Four and Kenson is a very rich area. Um, we also have uh, a work by uh, people like uh, Jeremy Knight, um, which, is, which has highlighted the significance of an early ecclesiastical presence in, in the region, uh, particularly associated with the major monastery at Llancarvan. And indeed, some of my earlier work in this region, um, uh, looking at uh, where we might uh, start to look to find early medieval settlement evidence, um, suggested that the region, the area we're looking at here in Fulmont de Mine, um, would be fruitful for, uh, 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 for identifying um, early medieval settlement. A little later on, some work myself and a colleague did on modelling uh, patterns of movement through the Vale of Glamorgan, um, a work actually funded by the Cambrian Archaeological Association. Um, and we can see that uh, uh, our work suggested there was a network of routeways converging within um, the uh, Castle Domain. So in terms of um, understanding the, the pre-Norman, the early medieval period, this looks like a pretty fruitful study area to focus on. Um, but also it, it's an area which of course we can learn a lot about the castle and the castle's um, environs. So moving on to the field work that we've done, 
The um, first kind of major piece of field work was to undertake an extensive um, uh, magnetic radiometer survey across as much of the uh, study area as we could. So we used a cart based system linked to a GPS to do this. This gives us, um, allows us to, to cover very large areas in comparatively uh, a short period of time and also really opens up the possibility for landscape scale um, geophysical survey. And we did this with a, a small team of students back in uh, July 2021. Um, and uh, we surveyed, well, basically everything that we were able to. Um, unfortunately, this little middle bit here was under crop, um, but we were able to survey uh, this area one and area two. Um, and in the process of collecting this data, we I calculated we walked about 140 miles um, up and down uh, collecting the, uh, the data. And the results were very positive. Um, we knew there were some sites within the domain. We, we know that from um, uh, a small amount of uh, uh, work that has been done and also some sites known for aerial photography. Um, but the geophysics imaged a series of sites uh, very nicely, including a number of um, enclosures and then some um, sort of unenclosed activity as well. Um, most of these features are sort of to the north of the study area, um, sort of clustering along the edge of the valley. We see enclosed and unenclosed um, sites, presumably settlement enclosures, but that, that we don't really have evidence to, uh, to say that they use, that is their function. Um, there's a range of enclosure forms, different shapes, different sizes. So presumably we're looking at a multi-period landscape um, here. And in terms of dating evidence, um, when you, you sort of look at these sites, on the basis of their morphology, traditionally we would suggest that they're probably late Iron Age or early Romana British in date. Um, but feasibly, they could obviously be earlier or later than that. And indeed, uh, it does look like uh, quite a lot of the activity uh, we've, we've got here may well actually be early medieval. So, we followed up the um, survey in 2022 with a small programme of evaluation excavation. Just four weeks with a full small team of students from Cardiff University. The aim of this work was to um, evaluate just a selection of the features, uh, to, to ground truth the geophysical anomalies, um, get some understanding of preservation, try to recover some evidence for dating and the fun and function of these sites, and really just establish uh, what the research potential is for undertaking further work and uh, more extensive campaign of excavation. And we um, uh, put in four trenches uh, in the kind of area two of the geophysics, um, just over sort of three um, of the key um, uh, uh, features. And over the coming period, uh, future years, we will be evaluating all of the features within this landscape. So let's have a look at some of the results here. So this is trench one, which was positioned over the uh, ditch and into the interior of a small sub-rectangular enclosure, which appeared to have an area of poorly defined, um, but, but certainly real enhanced magnetism um, within it. And in terms of the shape and size of this, uh, we, we as assumed we would be uh, looking at late Iron Age or early Romana British um, settlement enclosure. And the uh, so single trench, uh, bucket width, uh, just an evaluation. Um, and we basically, well, we found what we were expecting to in terms of the enclosure ditch. Um, not very big, about a metre and a bit wide, just under a metre deep. Um, certainly got two phases 
evidence for an internal bank which has slumped into the ditch. Um, and uh, we only dug a, a small sort of bit of it, um, two metres, um, but it was comparatively fines rich. Um, so we had quite a lot of animal bone, nearly a kilogram of animal bone from just a two metre wide section. Um, preliminary analysis of that suggests we've got sheep, goat, cattle, uh, but also um, chicken and dog. Um, we've had a, got a lead spindle whirl, um, an iron awl or drill bit, and a fair quantity of smithing slag. Um, but what's really quite exciting uh, about this feature is that it appears to be early medieval. Um, we've got two dates on animal bone, one from uh, a, a fill sealed by the collapse of the, the bank, um, and one above that layer, uh, both are early medieval, with the earlier one just slightly earlier. Good um, late 6th into 7th century um, dates. Now this is, this is quite remarkable. Um, early medieval sites are not commonly encountered um, in Wales, um, particularly ones which have uh, uh, fairly fines rich assemblages. Um, and if what we've excavated is representative of this enclosure as a whole, um, that, that's certainly quite exciting. As we move into the enclosure, um, we had inspect, expected to encounter um, uh, settlement features, um, but what we actually uh, recovered, discovered were at least four grave cuts um, in a single trench, and th this trench sampled about three to four percent of the um, of the entire enclosure. Uh, um, now one of these grave cuts was open, we applied for a burial license and revealed an east-west aligned extended inhumation head to the west. Um, fairly good preservation, um, uh, uh, no kiss but a simple dug grave. Um, it's a female burial with some quite interesting um, osteobiography which hopefully will We'll know more about as uh, we complete the analysis. And a radiocarbon date funded by um, Cambrian Archaeological Association uh, has given us a nice tight date of early 7th century for this, so contemporary with the enclosure. And it's noticeable that the fill of this grave contained a lot of um, occupation debris, animal bone and things like that, which could well account for the area of enhanced magnetism within this enclosure. So this site, which we sampled with Trench 1, appears to be an enclosed early medieval cemetery. Trench 2 was looking a little bit to the south. This was focusing on an incomplete um, but substantial ditch, which appears to partially enclose the cemetery and hilltop, um, but sort of fades away halfway through, through doing that. And, Provisional interpretation was that this might be a ploughed out prehistoric enclosure. Um, but uh, again, single evaluation trench revealed that we can be quite confident that this has not been ploughed out. It's a very substantial ditch, rock cut, V shaped, two and a half metres wide, nearly one and a half metres deep. Um, and interestingly, there's very little evidence within the uh, section for any sort of uh, recutting or, or even much of a primary fill indicative of a stabilization layer. It appears to have been a very short-lived um, feature. Um, no datable material um, or material which I'd be comfortable dating, uh, so we're going to have to do some more work here. Um, but it does pose some interesting questions about the relationship between this large enclosure and the smaller cemetery within it. Um, moving to the east now, the geophysics revealed a kind of complex of activity, which I'm calling here the eastern complex. Series of linears, um, uh, obviously extending into the field to the east, and we're going to have to survey that, which is one of our jobs for the summer. Um, trench 3, nothing too spectacular to note here. This is up, up here, just 
catching the uh, a gully and, uh, and a ditch and indeed that's what we found a gully and a ditch um, uh, no material uh, a dateable material from this at all but trench 4 which was positioned over what we thought would be the terminal of that ditch and you can see the ditch coming through um, but cut into the terminal we identified a very nice and quite elaborately built stone dry stone lined corn drying kiln um, this had an in situ burnt layer on its base which is uh, uh, just revealed, uh, just returned the radiocarbon date of the 7th into 9th centuries AD. So again another early medieval feature but a little later than the dates that we have so far from the cemetery. Also in this trench were a series of shallow cut features with some animal bone but quite poorly defined and amorphous and again we'll need to return to those. Um, and just noting there's some quite interesting, very nice parallels for this particular form of corn drying kiln uh, and particular thanks to uh, Rhiannon Como and Tudor Davis for highlighting some of these um, uh, from the Eastern Vale of Glamorgan region um, and four of which have, have revealed early medieval uh, radiocarbon dates as well. So what can we say so far? Well, we have um, early medieval cemetery and a contemporary enclosure um, associated with rich occupation deposits. There's a larger, incomplete, but currently undated outer enclosure, which begs the question of its relationship with the cemetery. Um, in the eastern complex, there's at least two phases of activity going on. Pre uh, a shallow ditch, possibly prehistoric, um, but we don't yet know and then the early medieval corn drying kiln. Um, so just from four small trenches, we've been able to establish that there's some real strong research potential here. Um, but there's obviously a lot of questions that uh, we haven't yet answered. Um, I think one thing we can say is the evidence that we've looked at so far um, um, is it, it, the evidence we looked at so far is quite similar to uh, sites which have been described as uh, cemetery settlements um, in Ireland or, or recently described by Marion Shiner as uh, multifunctional cemeteries. And these are sites with uh, burials and domestic activity but often not evidence for houses um, but metalworking, animal bones, crop processing, um, often part of larger complexes um, of, act, of activities um, and certainly what we've seen so far at Funman is, is fairly similar and I would just highlight this parallel with West Angle Bay. So what are we going to do going forwards? Well it's clear that there's great research potential here. Um, first main objective for this summer will be to complete the geophysical survey and indeed expand it. Over the next two years we'll be aiming to 100% uh, excavation of the early medieval cemetery to be followed by full osteo, osteo and biological, bioarchological analysis, um, thorough analysis of the early medieval settlement evidence including zooarchaeology, paleoenvironmental, archaeometallurgical analysis. I'll be collaborating with colleagues including Tudor Davis and Oliver Davis um, to expand this research um, to move out from the sites we've looked at so far and really consider all of the features within the study area. And ultimately we want to place Funmon within its regional and national context, hopefully from prehistory to medieval. And running alongside this a programme of outreach and engagement activities. Just a big thank you to the Cambrian Archaeological Association um, for supporting this work, provide, helping with the radiocarbon dates and indeed supporting some of the projects which, which uh, uh, underlie this, this one. Also thanks to uh, Nigel Ford and Catherine Taylor and the whole team at Fulmon who have done uh, so much to make us welcome, um, to the students who have worked on the project and uh, particularly to Tudor Davis um, who uh, uh, um, was my co-director 
on last season's excavations. Okay, thank you very much.